It's day 120 of the project and I'm really excited to be bringing you an exclusive first look at this brand spanking new release from Isimiyake. This one is called Bois Arctic and over the next 10 minutes I'll be letting you know everything you need to know about this one and whether it's worth picking up. Welcome to Mags Frags. <laughs> Yes, hello again everybody and welcome to another episode of Mags Frags. I'm Paul and this is day 120 of my Fragrance 365 project where the fragrance is the star of the show. Today's featured scent is called Bois Arctic and it's part of the Nuit d'Issy collection from Isimiyake. It has literally just come out in the winter of 2021 and it's described as a woody aromatic fragrance for men. I thought this one looked really cool and sounded really interesting from how it was described and being a bit of a visual person I just saw it and I thought yeah that's uh, it looks pretty cool does that one so I decided to pull the pull the trigger on it and go ahead and blind buy it. I picked this one up from the Notino website and this 100ml bottle size was £81 uh, but with a, a Black Friday discount I ended up paying around about £60 for it. Yet I normally start the presentation with the box but I can't wait to share this bottle with you because just look at this stunning green translucent bottle with the uh, blue hue. It's absolutely gorgeous and it's been inspired by the Aurora Borealis. Uh, it wins the award for the uh, the best looking Isimiyaki fragrance hands down. It's absolutely beautiful. It keeps the brand's uh, monolithic and uh, geometric form factor and features the name of the fragrance and the house which is uh, printed on the front in silver. There's nothing printed anywhere else on the bottle and you just get this matte black cap. Um, it's a, a black click, click on cap and then really snug for actually and then underneath we've got a black atomizer um, and that's got a really decent spray quality uh, but yeah i absolutely look at that look at the look at the color of that bottle it's absolutely gorgeous in fact i don't even think that this camera does this justice it is really beautiful when you see it uh, in real life and uh, the light shines through it the box comes in this green and black gradient and contains some chrome effect branding on the front including the name of the fragrance, the name of the house and the size and concentration. There's uh, some more product information on the back there and your barcode and then underneath we've got the, again the product name, uh, we've got the size and concentration and then we've got the batch code there at the bottom. The top notes in this one are grapefruit, mandarin orange and pink peppercorn. In the mid there's basil, geranium, green notes and black pepper. And in the base there's vanilla, tonka bean and tobacco. So when I read the note breakdown and saw vanilla, tonka bean and tobacco in the base and the pink and black pepper in the heart of the fragrance I was kind of expecting a sweet, dark and fairly spicy fragrance but this one is anything but. It's actually really bright and fresh and uplifting with citruses and pink pepper producing a sparkling and dynamic opening but it's not long before the aromatic green notes and the basil start to take over and to my nose uh, they stand out the most. You do get a bit of sweetness but it's certainly not the dominant player in this one. It reminds me quite a bit of Polo Green uh, but a more modern take on it. It smells very unique though and this is what the uh, new Polo Green Intense should have been rather than just being a generic and forgettable fragrance. It has a real uh, wintry smell to it but it, it goes down the um, cold and fresh and earthy route rather than the warm sweet gourmand direction. I really like this one, it's very likeable and interesting and there's nothing challenging or funky in here that's uh, going to turn people off. In the far dry down you do get a little bit of sweetness, uh, 
from the from the bass notes just all blending together and coming through but they all fuse together um, and instead of any one individual note standing out what you get is uh, is it like a really pleasant soft leather accord uh, but it's a, like an, a leather outdoors in a, a cold snowy day type of feel Yeah, this is a really clever fragrance because the aroma suggests that it, it, it's for winter time. But the freshness of it, I would say, would have a really nice cooling effect in the summer months, making it, in my opinion, uh, an all-year-round, an all all-seasons versatile fragrance. The marketing suggests that it's a winter scent, uh, but there's nothing in here that, that would suggest to me that you couldn't wear this um, in warmer weather and all year round. I wore uh, this polo green all year round for many years back in the day and this one is an absolute beast. Uh, I would say this is more refined, it's more modern uh, and easier to wear version than the uh, polo green. It's masculine, crisp and classy and I can imagine this one on a really sharp guy in a tailored suit. I think it suits uh, a guy maybe in his mid-twenties upwards because it has a bit more of a mature stylish elegance to it and it's not as playful and bubblegummy sweet as your new blue designer fragrances. <laughs> You'd have only given this one full wearing, which was just three or four sprays, but I, I'd say I got a good uh, solid seven hours with a, a decent projection. And I would say that's probably on the more conservative side. I think if, I can imagine that um, this had last a, a lot longer if you were to give yourself a few extra sprays. And I believe you can give yourself a few extra sprays with this one because there's nothing really in here that's uh, too sweet or, or going to get too annoying. Yet yeah, I'm really excited about this one and it transports me straight back to a time when I first wore polo green. I can imagine this uh, will be an absolute massive compliment grabber and I'm really looking forward to wearing it for a few nights over the festive season. I was uh, a little bit sceptical about paying full retail for an Isimiyaki fragrance because you just know that in a few months time you're going to be uh, seeing this at discounters for 50% less than, than what you've paid for it at full retail. But I can honestly say that it's worth every penny at full retail because it's a, a surprisingly gorgeous fragrance in a gorgeous bottle. Well done Isimiyake, this one uh, gets a straight 10 out of 10 from me. Yeah, so once again, that's about it for today's scent of the day. In the next episode, I'm going to be bringing you one from Montal, and it's one that gets a lot of love from the fragrance community. So if you uh, want to be notified when I upload that one, don't forget to hit the bell icon. Also, if you found this video useful, please don't forget to give it a like and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Um, it's also great to hear your, uh, your opinions, your thoughts, your critiques and all of these fragrances that feature in the 365 project. So keep your comments coming down in the comments section. There's also around about 150 videos now on the channel, so plenty, uh, plenty of videos for you to go out when you need your next fragrance chat fix. So uh, don't forget to uh, check out all the other videos. So once again, thank you very much for tuning into this episode. Stay smelling fresh, keep safe, and I'll see you for another one very soon. Bye bye for now.